No idea. I work for the DOE, I don't take vacations. All right. All right. I'll remember that. Right. Everybody, I'm Tyler. One of the not, also not those many sons. And uh, I guess I'm sort of your youth pastor. We do, I run the youth group in the back. And um, since dad's gone, I'm next up to bat. Huh? Uh, <laughs> so today's message, we're talking about love. And that's a word we all hear all the time. And we're not talking about love in like the worldly way like we see in movies, TV, social media. We're gonna talk about love, like what it can and has done for us in many different ways. And with that said, the first point that you can write down in your notes, if you want to, I think there's just blanks, you can just go whatever, is point one, love has saved you and it died for you. So let's take a look at the most famous scripture in the Bible probably, which is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now let's look at the love has saved you part of that aspect. It says that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Love has saved us from perishing into the depths of darkness and an, and an eternity in hell. But there seemed to be no way for mankind to pay the debt of our collective sins. Love came down and saved us. And the reason I'm saying love has saved us is because in 1 John chapter 4 it says that God is love. So the very thing that we know as love is God. And we needed to be saved. Some of us didn't know we need to be saved. Some of us still don't know we need to be saved. But it died for us. So if God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, and God is love, that means Jesus was love itself. The very thing we cherish the most in life, the thing that people die for, kill for, spend their whole life searching for, came down and gave laid his life down for us. Think about that. Love had to die. The price of our sin was love had to be had to die for us. In the book of Romans, in chapter 8, it asks a simple question. And that question is, can anything separate us from the love of God? And a few scriptures after that, it answers its own question. In chapter 8, verse 38 to 39, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, no. Nothing in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation. I'm going to say that again. Nothing in all creation will ever separate us from the love of God that we, are, that we find in Jesus Christ. Why can't anything separate us from love? Because nothing can separate us from God. God and true love are one and the same. Because God is love. When people, people in our lives pass away, well, I'm going to give an example of myself. I have a dog named Wags. I think Auntie Candy got the chance to meet him back in the day, have to leave. When Facebook comes up and they have, they have those memory things, I will see my dog. He's been gone for many years now. And I'll cry. And I'll have some joy. Why? Because I love him. Not loved him. I still love him. My grandparents are no longer here. Oh, I, you could say I loved it. No, I still love it. Just because they're gone doesn't mean my love is gone. It's not love, it's love. Nothing can separate them from my love and nothing can separate me from their love. So how much greater can the love of love itself go beyond what you and I can find? And that leads into my second point. By the way, I don't do long messages. I'll try. I'm a youth pastor. You can ask Noah. Anissa, Kona, you got like 20 minutes tops with you guys. That leads to my second point, which is this. Number two, love should change you. Love changes people. 
You can think about like when you see someone when they're with their love, you, they start dressing nicer, maybe they get more in shape, maybe they get less in shape, depending on the person. Stop being kinder sometimes. Look at, I'll, I'll go back to pets. When you have a, you have a pet and you, you pour love into it, that thing wants to be around you all the time, especially if you have a dog. If you can get a cat to do that, more props to you. <laughs> but that dog wants to be around you. Why? Because it loves you. All it wants to do is be around you. And it's it, it's exact replication of what love you put into it. It is a proven fact that if you speak to plants as they grow, lovingly and kindly, they will grow better. The same thing is with you and me. Imagine children. If you don't speak love into their life, how will that grow? If it affects the plant, how will it affect you and I? And in the youth group, I ask the kids questions. So guess what? I'm about to ask you some questions. Some of you are going to have to be put on the spot right now. Brian, you are directly in front of me. <laughs> How has love changed you? And it can be love, like as a father, as worldly love, or as God love. How has love changed you? Now let's ask a mother. Auntie Sharon, how has the love when you had your children changed you? definitely changed you. Now, I'm put one of the youth on the spot. Oh yeah, there's only two of you in this room. 50-50. <laughs> and Noah, I'm looking directly at you. Kona had a bit later tonight. Kona had his movie premiere last night. Yeah. Shout out to Kona. Was it Kali or Mo? Both of them? Man, they doubled down, huh? Blackjack. All right. How'd it go? Awesome. Exhausted? Yeah. You should be. All right. <laughs> Noah, in your way, whether it be love for your parents or in anything, think about it. How has love changed you? You're, and it will change you throughout your life. But how has it changed you at the moment? Oh, yeah. On the spot. Looking directly at you. Eye contact. It can be simple. Love changed me because now that I've stopped playing games, I've been without the computer. All right. There we go. He did it, everyone. Usually he doesn't say anything in you if he tries. Score one for Melalani. <laughs> and sadly, there are some things in our life we're not letting love change. And the question I want, to ask, I want you to ask yourself is why? Why are you not letting love into those parts of your life? Love changes everything. Why? Because God changes everything and God is love. So what in your life are you not letting the love of God into? Where in your life are you not letting love itself into? I'm guilty. Every pastor is, every person is. If you find me a perfect Christian, I will say, oh, you found Jesus then. Because that's the only one. Where in your life are you not letting love touch? Where are you not letting life change you? So I implore you to trust in love. So in actuality, I'm asking you to trust in God. So let's go to point number three. What and who is love? And what we read earlier and what I spoke on a few moments ago already gave us the who. Now let's look at the what. Last week in the youth group we read 1 uh, Corinthians 13. It says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. 
It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always perseveres. That is some of the characteristics of what love is. Now I'm going to replace that scripture and I'll replace it with the word love with God. Because the one and the same. God is patient. God is kind. He does not envy. He does not boast. He is not proud. He does not dishonor others. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. He keeps no records of wrongs and love. Does, and he does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects. He always trusts, always hopes, and he always perseveres. I'm going to read it one more time. And this time, it's to reflect on ourselves. Why? Would we do that? Because God is in every single one of us. Therefore, love is in every single one of us. So let's read, I'm going to read that again and say, we should be. We should be patient. We should be kind. We should not envy. We should not boast. We should not be proud. We should not dishonor, dishonor others. We should not be self-seeking. We should not be so easily angry. We should keep no record of wrongs. We should, we should not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. We should protect, we should trust, we should hope, and we should persevere. And we can do all those things with God, who is love itself within, within, within us. The word love is mentioned over 500 times in the Bible. If you read the ESV, over 800 times. And I don't even know how much in the King James Version, because that's a whole other world. Let's read some of those. Colossians 3, 14. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Proverbs 3. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor with God. Ephesians 4, 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient bearing with one another in love. 1 John 4, we love because he loved us first. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. 1 Peter 4, above all, love each other because love covers a multitude of sins. Romans 12, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, and think to what is good. And the last scripture I'm going to read on this, just of the many times it's on there, is 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do everything in love. Do everything in God. Do everything in Jesus. Do everything in love. Much easier said than done but better done than never done. As I scroll down my Chromebook, which leads to my fourth and final point, is that you should be love. Now, what is that? The second John 1, 6 says, follow his commands, and my greatest command is that you walk in love. What is walking in? It can mean many things. You may be the only version of Jesus someone sees. You may be the only version of true love someone ever sees. Love is just a word until someone comes around and gives a meaning. How many times have you heard someone say, I love you? But what does it mean? You hear it when you're growing up, I love you, I love you. But it's just a word until someone really shows you what it means. Will you be that someone that gives that old but true saying, God loves you meaning in someone's life? I'll give you an example from my life. My mom is that person. My mom is the example of love. I, can, I can't see God all the time. He's just sometimes life is rough. But I do see my mom. My mom is constantly there. She walks me through the darkest times of my life. Her love for me 
made me better. It saved me. It changed me. My mom was the walking example of love in my life. Her, may your actions match your words, and may your words match your actions. At the school I work for, I run the upper grade lunch, I supervise it. So I get on the microphone, say, throw the plates away, line up, be quiet. But at the end of every lunch, I say this to all the kids. If no one ever said they loved you or believed in you today, let me change that. Mr. Tyler loves you and he believes in you. And I mean it. Every person, every kid, every single one of you, I hope when you come in contact with me that you feel loved. And that's all we gotta be. When people leave your presence, they should feel loved. Love can mean a lot of things. Sometimes love is punishment, sometimes is discipline, but they should feel loved. Many things. But above all, it says faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is what? Love. Why? Because God is love. And if God is in you, you should be love. The most complicated and simple word of all time. Love. We all want it. We all seek it. Some of us don't love ourselves. Some of us have a hard time loving others. It's not easy. And the Bible says you don't have to like everyone. But you have to love it. I don't like some of my distant family members. I don't like everyone I meet, but I do love them. Oh, trust me, it's hot, it's rough. That includes the guy that cuts you off in traffic. That includes the kid that don't listen to you. Well, after you jumped up right there, what happened there? I'm on the way here. I don't know. That includes your spouse or specific other that doesn't that you don't get along with sometimes. You don't gotta like them all day every day, but you have to love them. It is a command that we love one another as Christ loved us. If I were to think about God's love, I fall incredibly short and worthy of it. But I also feel like I fall that short when it comes to love of my mom and dad. I don't deserve it, but I have it, so therefore let me share it. What we would do with that? You don't have to like it. You have to love them. Now where can you be loved in someone's life? That's another question you can ask yourself. Where can you be loved? We can all agree that love has changed us. Now how will you change it in other people's lives? So I'm going to play a video, and then afterwards we're going to time with some self-reflection, and then we're gonna, we'll pray out. I don't know how long I've been. I think I've been up here for like 15 minutes. I'm not sure. But I'm in, I've been up here. <laughs> Uncle Keith, can you get the lights real quick, sir? Thank you. I know. It's a little distance away. So, Charlotte, you're going to have to plug that back in. Right. Okay. Our lives are shaped by those that love us, and our lives are shaped by those that refuse to love us. The sweetest music that reaches to the highest heaven is the beating of two hearts that truly love each other. To love abundantly is to live abundantly, and to love forever is to live forever. Love is the doorway through which the human soul passes from selfishness to service. Love does that. The three most profound words in human speech is God is love. The Bible says it's beyond human comprehension. Love is more than the characteristic of God. God is love. He does not try to love you. He cannot help but love you because that's what he is. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is love. It is a concert that surpasses the knowledge of men. No man can adequately describe it. No man can adequately understand it because the Bible says it surpasses knowledge. There are three kinds of love. Which kind do you have? There's the if kind of love. If you do this, I'll love you. If you succeed, I'll love you. If you come up to my expectations, I'll love you. The because kind of love. I love you because you're intelligent. I love you because you have money. I love you because you're beautiful and you're handsome. And then there's the in spite of kind of love, God's love. I love you in spite of your failures. I love you in spite of your miserable past. I love you in spite of your weaknesses and your faults. God's love, I loved you, faults, failures, and all. When God saw you through the eyes of love, He was looking at your potential. He was not looking at your past. Those of you who are going through indescribable circumstances, when you see God and God sees you, lift up your heads and rejoice. The best is yet to be. Every battle you go through, every heartache you endure, every tear you shed, makes the love of God richer and purer in your life. People will stop loving you. Husbands will abandon their wives and wives will abandon their husbands without cause. Parents will abandon their children. Man's love will fail you, but the love of God will never fail you. God the Father loves you with an everlasting love. He will never give up on you. He will always be there when you call. He'll put his arms around you. He'll heal you. In the darkest night, he will whisper, I am with you. Be bold, be strong. I will never leave you nor forsake you to the ends of the earth. But the mark of Christianity is being to love the unlovable. That's the love of God. And you can't do that unless the love of God is in you. Love is not what you say. Love is what you do. You're not living until you discover the love of God. And when you find it, let it baptize you. Explode in your life. And it will bring to you a personal growth and development and spiritual prosperity you didn't know a human being could have. self-reflecting we're going to play the song Reckless Love of God yes we're keeping with the theme um, and just think about how has love affected you and how it still changes us so Charlotte if you can go ahead and play that just turn it on Charlotte <laughs> you know how you're, you're, in your, you're in your master's program come on Can we help? There you go. Hey, look at that. So, so spend some time. You can close your eyes. You can bow your head. Whatever you choose to do. Just think. Reflect on the love of God. Reflect on love for itself in all the areas of your life. Can I turn it up, Charlie?
before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so
I'll leave you with this one before I pray. First Corinthians 13 says, the first thing it says, I could have all the knowledge of man, understand everything, all prophecies. I could have faith that moved mountains. But if I do not have love, I have nothing. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you are. Thank you for the love you have poured out into every single one of us. Lord, I pray the parts of our hearts and our lives that we do not let your love touch where we have opened that door of life. And let your love that had died and saved for us change us, God. May we walk in your love. May throughout our day, Father, and above anything else, that we love each other and love you. May we speak it, and may we show it, Father. Thank you, God, for all the love that you gave for us, and continue to give for us. In Jesus' mighty name, the church says, Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yes, if you ever hear that I'm preaching, make sure you're here because I'm not long. All right. Enjoy your three-day weekend. <laughs> if you see a veteran, thank you.